Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to Thursday of Take Me Outside Week. I'm just going to let uh, everybody join and get their Zoom windows open and loaded. Sometimes it takes a few moments for so many classes to join. But welcome to everybody. My name is Stephanie. I am the program manager here at Take Me Outside, and I have had the great pleasure of hosting a whole bunch of these wonderful sessions this week. And uh, Thursday is always super fun. We always get to talk to amazing people, and today is no exception. Uh, if you are new to Take Me Outside or Take Me Outside Week, uh, our whole goal is to change the way we learn and spend more time every day outside uh, learning, playing, growing, and uh, Take Me Outside Week is a celebration of that. So it started 13 years ago when the executive director, Colin, ran across Canada and the finishing day was Take Me Outside Day. And now we celebrate every year uh, and encourage everyone to head outside, uh, spend time outside playing and learning and making nature art this year. So yesterday was official Take Me Outside Day. And we encouraged everyone to head outside and make art from nature, from things found in nature. And we've already had so many beautiful photos being submitted. So if you haven't done that yet, you have the whole rest of the week to get into it. Uh, and you can check out all the recordings and all the other details and everything uh, on our Take Me Outside webpage. I just put it in the chat. And I will put some more details throughout as we're as we're chatting. Uh, if you want any activity ideas, if you want any resources and things like that connected to any of our themes, including health and well-being today, we did put together a resource guide that uh, can inspire you to head outside if you're wanting a little extra push to head out there. And today I'm joining you from Vancouver Island in British Columbia, Canada. And please share in the chat where you're joining in from and what grade you're in or anything like that that you wanna share and say hello. We would love for you to do that. If you know the traditional territory in which you're joining from, you can add that in the chat as well. And if you are not sure where you're joining in from, I'll add a wonderful resource called nativeland.ca to learn more about that. I'm joining in from the unceded territory of the Coatzin people, the Cowichan tribes, the Holcomenum speaking people uh, within the larger territory of the Coast Salish. And if you're also joining in from there today, hello, hello. I know people are joining in from across North America, which is amazing. We're so happy to have you all here today. And for those of you who are joining and um, getting acquainted with Zoom, there's just a few things to keep in mind here. We're on webinar format, which means you're automatically muted and we unfortunately can't see you with your video on, but um, you can use the reaction buttons. You can uh, type in the chat. You can type in the question and answer box. I already saw some, <laughs> at least one question coming through the chat, which is fantastic. So feel free to engage that way. We love to uh, see everyone participating and to see all the excitement coming through the chat. So. Uh, the prizes at the end also, so stick around, are chosen from those who have asked questions throughout today. So make sure you uh, think of a good question and send it in and we will choose prize winners from that. And today, the prizes that we're giving away um, for this session is five free memberships to PHE Canada, which is fantastic. And I'm going to introduce Ryan here, Ryan Foy from PHE Canada. So we're really, really happy that we partner with PHE Canada uh, throughout Take Me Outside Week and throughout the year. Uh, so really special thanks to Ryan for being here. Uh, PHE Canada, also called Physical and Health Education Canada, uh, is established all the way back in 1933. So they're a national charitable or association and Canada's recognized leader in physical and health education. So. If you need programs, professional development, all kinds of community activities, they're the ones to go to. And I'm here to introduce Ryan, who's the lead of programs and resources there. And uh, I'm going to, Ryan, if you want to introduce yourself more, just head straight over to introducing Abby, then feel free. I'm going to pass the mic over to you. Awesome. Thank you, Stephanie. And good morning to those joining from the West Coast. Good afternoon for everyone on the East Coast. 
welcome. As Stephanie mentioned, definitely feel free to drop in the chat box where you're joining uh, in from here today. Uh, as Stephanie mentioned, my name is Ryan Foy, and I am the lead for programs and resources at PHE Canada. Uh, and I'm excited and honored to be here um, as one of your hosts here today. I myself uh, am joining in from the traditional unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people, also known as Nova Scotia. Uh, and this is my home fire. And I have this beautiful backdrop behind me here today. Um, and it's just a real honor to live, work and play on these lands. I'm a runner, an educator and a writer as well. And I really enjoy exploring the trails, especially this time of year, all across uh, Turtle Island. We just have incredible scenery um, and physical activity is a big part of my life, uh, which is why I'm grateful to work for a great organization like PHE Canada and to support amazing initiatives like Take Me Outside Week and Take Me Outside. Um, <clears throat> today is really exciting. So we have uh, in today's live session, we have a special guest who's joining us who happens to know a thing or two about ski jumping, uh, also flying across the side of a mountain. Uh, and being physically active outside. So um, our guest speaker today is a real champion. Uh, in a minute, uh, we will hear from our guest speaker who will share her physical activity journey as an Olympian and how she has overcome challenges throughout her life. Uh, following the presentation, there will be, uh, or she will be taking us through a couple of fun activities. Um, and we also would encourage you and your classes to take the activities done and shared today um, outside during breaks and in your classes, not only this week during Take Me Outside week, but all year long. So we'll drop a few of those that Abby has picked um, in, in the chat box throughout the presentation as well. So with that, uh, I'd like to introduce and, and turn it over to our main speaker for today's live event, Abigail Strait. Welcome. Um, a little bit of a bio for Abby uh, before we, we turn it over here. So um, Abby started ski jumping at the age of six and entered her first international competition at age 10 in Park City, Utah. She joined an annual trip to the U.S. every year until she was 18 and even completed or sorry, competed in her first international ski federation event in Austria when she was only 14. That's pretty impressive. Abby was part of a history making moment in her Olympic debut at the Beijing Olympics in 2022. She and her teammates won bronze in the inaugural Olympic mixed team ski jumping event, which was Canada's first ever uh, Olympic medal in ski jumping, which is absolutely incredible. I feel like I have so much to learn from you, Abby. I'm so excited to hear you talk here today. Um, last year, building off of her Olympic success, Abby continued to improve throughout the summer and into the winter where she recorded 21 top 15 finishes, her first World Cup podium, and earned the chance to ski fly in the first ever women's event with a select group of the top 15 female ski jumpers in the world. Last summer, um, continued to show progress and promise for Abby, where she finished fourth, sixth, fifth, and fourth again in France, Poland, and Romania at the 2023 Summer Grand Prix competitions uh, which is the summer equivalent to that World Cup. So pretty exciting stuff. Uh, final note about Abby before I turn it over. Uh, her off-season hobbies include skiing, of course, uh, which she's very good at, um, mountain biking, running, and beekeeping, which is super fascinating. Um, in her free time, she also attends university online at the Toronto Film School, where she studies uh, graphic design. So with that, I want to welcome Abby. Uh, thanks for coming on here today and, and take it away. Thank you so much, Ryan. I, I got the first step right. I unmuted my mic. So we're on we're on the right track. That was a great intro. Thank you. I, I feel like everyone knows so much about me now. I don't even have to do the presentation. <laughs> Kidding. Um, hi, everybody. I wish I could see all your faces looking back at me, but uh, I'm just going to visualize that you're here in front of me. I do a lot of visualization for my sports. So I, I can see you. I can see you. You're there. Um, as Ryan introduced, I am Abigail Strait, but I am Abby more commonly. I only get called Abigail when I am in trouble for my mom. So we're going to stick with Abby for this presentation. Um, Canadian ski jumper. I've been ski jumping basically my whole life. It's been lots of ups and downs and ups and downs and downs and downs and downs and ups. But um, obviously the greatest success was 
um, our performance, our team performance in Beijing, where we got a medal. And yeah, I'm going to keep my presentation very loose today. I actually, I haven't, I, I have not had enough focus in my mind to run through the whole presentation. So I don't know how long it's going to take, but I hope it can entertain some of you. I know we have lots of different ages. We've got maybe some high school students all the way down to um, elementary school. So hopefully I can keep you older ones entertained and also you younger kids. I'll, I'll um, got some fun stuff to do today. I'm just going to talk you through my sport because also ski jumping is obviously a very unique sport to talk about in Canada because we don't see it on TV ever. It's not like hockey, soccer, basketball. Um, maybe you've heard about it. Maybe you haven't, but I'm going to kick off my presentation here. I can share my screen, right? I've never done a webinar, so we did a little crash course <laughs> 15 minutes ago. Um, good? Looks you... good. Okay, good. Okay. Um, also, I have my social media handles up here for any of you if you want to ever reach out to me or follow along. I I will always respond to messages and um, yeah, I'll appreciate um anybody that wants to, to chat. So I'm gonna kick off my presentation actually with a video, just in case um, anyone didn't see our performance at the Olympics, didn't see it on TV or didn't get the chance to, uh, you know, see our, our history making Olympic moment. So I'm gonna, I guess, change my screen share now to the first video I have, which is a video that Team Canada posted after our event. And it just kind of rewinds, it runs through the, through the emotions. They basically interviewed me and my teammate the day after. So we were like just rambling about how it felt and then they pieced it all together into something that actually made sense. So I'm gonna share that. Where is it? Um, can you see the video, Stephanie, or is there a bunch of yeah. videos? Nope, yeah, you're, the video you want is up, yeah. Okay, I, I can't see it, so I don't know how to play it. Hmm. One second. Troubleshooting already. Oh, I got the mic right. There it is. Okay, it's because they're all stacked on top of one another. Okay, I'm going to play that for you guys now. I just kind of think about it for a second, and then I'm like, wait, did that happen? Wait, I keep asking if it's a dream. The first round, we jumped into fourth place. So we were really excited, and we all just kind of had to look at each other and be like, okay, let's hold this down. We've all got one more jump to do. But when I came off after my second jump, I knew that I'd done good, and I felt confident my team could continue to carry on. So as soon as I saw Matt's jump, I just knew that my teammates had done their job, and now it was time for me to do my job. I had a really solid jump. I was so happy at that point because I knew that we were sitting in third place, and only Mackenzie was left. Max jump was up. We all went out and we tackled him. And that was one of the best moments of my life. It feels so surreal. Our goals were just to have fun. And that was really all it took. Standing up there with my three teammates, knowing that we had all just done something so huge for ourselves, for our sport, for Canada. And it still hasn't set in yet. All right, let's get back to my presentation. I hope that that shared properly and there wasn't too much lag for you guys, but you get the gist of it. Um, that was a, also a very unique event because ski jumping is an individual event, but every once in a while, a couple times a year, we get the chance to compete in a team where they actually combine your results and you end up with a total of eight jumps instead of just the two that you would get in an individual competition. So it's a really cool environment to be an individual athlete, but then to actually have teammates to lean on. And, uh, it was, it was really fun, but we'll get back to that. I'm going to, um, yeah, there's some photos there, but it wasn't, it didn't just happen. Like I went to the Olympics and got a medal. Um, that was kind of the height of it, but I obviously started somewhere a lot more relatable, which is skiing. I started skiing when I was three years old, um, following in my, my brother's tracks. We used to go out almost every weekend. We had a place in Invermere, uh, BC, and we'd go ski in uh, Panorama, if anyone knows the ski hill. But it was uh, that's what I did when I was young, and my parents got me into that. And I was always the kid that would straight, straight beeline down the hill into a crowd of people, never pizza. My parents were like, what are we going to do with her? Um, so then they decided a good idea would be to step it up a level and let me <laughs> go off some jumps and get some airtime. So I went to a summer camp here in Calgary and we tried a bunch of different sports and ski jumping was one of them. And then 
they came up to me afterwards and asked if I wanted to keep doing it. And little six-year-old me, I guess, decided that this is what I wanted to be doing. And when I was that age, it was more about the friends that I had there. And we do all other kinds of stuff outside. We would go biking, we would hike, we would run, we would uh, do gymnastics, which isn't outside, but we did all kinds of sports and it really helped to make me a really well-rounded and coordinated kid, I guess. Um, but it wasn't always so sunshine and rainbows um I kind of progressed up to like Ryan said I went to the started going to the U.S. and I started going to Europe um but in 2017 I basically got thrown onto the national team and tried to qualify for the 2018 Olympics and I was 16 years old so it was or 15 even and it was uh, a really hard push I didn't really know what was going on I was trying really hard I wasn't getting great results but it actually came uh pretty Pretty close in the end we had one olympic spot for the pyeongchang 2018 olympics and i happened to be jumping the best out of the team but they they sent the um more experienced older athlete ahead of me which at the time broke my heart but in hindsight i think i wouldn't have known what was going on and it would have just been a very overwhelming experience so i'm really glad that 2022 did end up being my first olympic experience and it was obviously very positive for me but um i'm going to talk a little bit about some of the, as you can see, some of the, the photos on the screen, some of my setbacks that I've had that really happened between the years of 2017 and 2021. So in 2017, as I said, the um, I failed to qualify for the 2018 Olympics. Very sad moment, but I decided obviously I'm going to keep pushing. I'm still young in my sport. Um, and then in 2018, you can see the photo on the right. Uh, they shut down our training facilities in Calgary. So I'm not going to get into too many details because it obviously makes me upset. And it was uh, a pretty political decision, I think, for them to close it. It was more about uh, money and less about keeping the Olympic legacy alive. So we lost your hills in 2018. In 2019, that's me on the left. I had a really, really bad crash training in Park City, Utah, and I blew out my knee. I tore my ACL, my LCL, my meniscus, uh, complete concussion. I was, and that injury took me out for a year. So they actually had to go in and take part of my hamstring and put it in my knee to make a new ligament. So obviously that's, the body's going to need some, some time to heal from that. So I took a full year um, rehabbing, recovering from that injury. And then when I came back the following year in 2020, I was actually landing subconsciously more on my left leg, my uninjured knee. And I ended up with a fracture in my left tibia. So over, over use, I slowly started to break that bone and basically competed that whole season on a broken leg, which was very painful. And obviously I wasn't performing uh, well. I was just like injury on injury and it was a, a rough couple of years. Um, and then also in 2020 and 2021, as we all know what happened, COVID hit. So obviously there was many, many great things that were being lost and taken from people. Um, and all, mine was not by any means the worst that could have happened, but we lost a lot of our competitions and we weren't able to travel, obviously. So we were basically training just as hard as we usually do, but there was no real objective and place to go. And Unfortunately for women's ski jumping, also they were canceling all the men's competitions, but they were getting replaced and the women's competitions were not getting complaced. So we were also watching our fellow male competitors continue to perform, which was really, really a hard, hard thing to go through. So lots of struggle years. But then finally, in 2022, we got a new coach's staff. I moved full time to Slovenia. Didn't mention that, but I live in Slovenia. I'm only home in Calgary for a, uh, a week now. I leave tomorrow. But we got new training facilities, a new home base, and that's when our performance started to climb towards the Olympics. So, yeah, I made the Olympic team uh, about six months before the Olympics because I was performing so well, but I couldn't tell anyone. So I couldn't announce that I was on the team until a week out from the Olympics. That was kind of painful. Like my family knew, my friends knew, but I couldn't be like, ah, look at what I did. Um and yeah, so we're going to now jump from all that sad, sad, depressing injury, facility loss, struggle years into one of the highlights of my career, which was obviously the Olympics. Um, oh, I have a video actually before we do that, that I forgot to share. But 
this video, I'm, I'm kind of rambling a little bit. Um, this video shows some things from my injury and also my journey as a ski jumper when I was younger, progressing up hills um, and coming back from that injury to finally be able to ski jump again. It shows also some some sadness from results that I wasn't happy with. Um, it's kind of the whole package, but it ends on a bright note. So I'll, I'll share that video with you guys here. Technicals. Okay. Good job, Abba. Go, Ab. Go, Ab. Beauty. This one, I've been This one, I've been You taught me how to grow, how to find. Now you're looking down the sun and I know. Hey, you said life was easy. I've been on the road, I've been free. I wonder if you found the way you see me. But you gotta believe me when I say, I have to go to hell to get to heaven. See some shit and learn to come for this. I ended on the good. I ended on the good. And I know what they know is the same. I ended on the good. 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 That one still makes me emotional. <laughs> the best part for me is at the the very beginning when I'm just a little kid and I can hear my dad in the background saying good job, Ab. It makes me like, oh, it actually makes me, my parents have been so supportive my entire athletic career. So I'm super thankful for that. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of shows some of the comeback. There's some gnarly shots in there of my knee, but uh, that was that was how it was. That was the whole story. So yeah. Um, now let's get into one of the best parts of the Olympics, which is the team gear. It's what everybody, oops, I've got some something popping up here. Um, it's admittedly what I've, one thing that I've looked forward to my whole uh, life, especially uh, that now that Team Canada is partnered with Lululemon, uh, every other team was super jealous of our fits and trying to trade everything. And I was like, I don't know. I think I'm going to hold on to my stuff. It's pretty nice. Um, I have like a, a few things here actually from the Olympics that I want to do kind of a little show and tell. Um, one thing here, <laughs> maybe the coolest thing I got from the Olympics uh, was my medal. I meant to show that earlier in the presentation, but I wish you guys could hold it because every, every time that somebody holds the medal, every single time they're like, Oh, it's so heavy. It's, it's like shockingly, heavy I don't know how to describe it to you maybe like a pop can which is pretty heavy for something that's this flat and this uh yeah so that was a cool thing I got at the Olympics what else do I have here um this is actually pre-Olympics our team made made us hockey jerseys with our names and the year on it 22 which is also my birthday February 22nd so that's pretty cool I, I wear this uh, on celebratory occasions, usually my it's usually my New Year's Eve outfit. Um, this from the Olympics is the accreditation. So this is what allows us to get everywhere we need to go. You guys can they can see my my screen, right? Stephanie? Yeah, yeah we can okay. see. It off to I was the just side, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was hidden. Um, this is what allows you to get everywhere you need to go at the Olympic Games. If you don't have this, you're basically stuck in. Uh, China so didn't want to lose this one and there's these tags on it this one was for uh, a coca-cola machine in the Canada house so you could just go scan it and get a drink and I don't know what this is but yeah this is what helps you get around uh, the Olympic village what else do I have here these are um, my competition bibs so what we wear when we compete this is my uh, the one I wore during the team event I was number two, three. We were the second team and I was the third jumper on our team to go. And this is from my, my individual event. Um, get all kinds of cool stuff like this trapper hat, which I'd, I've never worn since the Olympics, but it's kind of a, a cool one to look at. I 
Um, yeah, that was that was fun. Um, what else? Here's one of my favorite one of my favorite things about uh, being at the Olympics. So you can see the photo on the right there. That's my famous hat. Um, so we showed up to the Olympics and they give you this bag of pins, like 40 of the same pins. And I was like, what am I going to do with this? I don't need 40 of the same pin. And then we just dis we discovered that you're supposed to trade them with other teams. And you can also do all kinds of uh, like there's mini games you can play in the village and you can trade them with the volunteers. And at first I was like, oh, okay, I kind of get it. And then I I got like this pin bug and I started uh, trading everywhere. And I filled up my whole hat with Olympic pins. So that was, that was, uh, I was the first one on the team to do that. And then everybody else started doing it too. Um, this wasn't, uh, didn't get this guy from the Olympics, but He's pretty cool anyways. He's chilling my, uh, commandeered my parents' office. So anyways, lots of cool stuff we get at the Olympics, lots of cool gear. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's the Olympics. I thought, I can't remember if I had a video for the Olympics also. Okay. Maybe at the end. Um, but yeah, the Olympics isn't the be-all end-all in sport. Uh, it's it's what the world sees. It's obviously Canada sees a lot more about ski jumping when it's in the Olympics, but there's actually a lot of other really cool things that have been happening. And one of the, the things that Ryan mentioned in my intro was ski flying. So ski flying, let's talk about that a little bit. Oh, here's a photo of uh, me when I went <laughs> when I went home to do my little media stuff and this is my my ex teammate's kid, and she wasn't very happy with the weight of the metal. But so here's a facility in Planica, Slovenia. And this is where I train. They have all the hill sizes from 10, 20, 30, 60, 80, all the way on the right. Those are the Olympic sized hills. Those are the 90 and the 120. And then way over on the left side, kind of hidden in the trees, you can see uh, a ski flying hill. So for reference, there's that facility and that is a ski flying hill. We don't hear about ski flying, but it's just a really, really, really extreme version of ski jumping. That hill is twice the size of the biggest Olympic hill. And these events only happen two, two or three times a year. And there's only six ski flying hills in the world. So last year we had a qualification during a tournament in Norway. And I got to be a part of the first ever, oh, this photo, there we go the first ever women's ski flying event. So here's the group of ladies that got to do it. There's some athletes from Slovenia, Finland, Canada, obviously, Germany, Norway. There's one French girl. And this was a really, really cool weekend to be a part of. Um, everyone was just really happy for one another. This is something that we had been working towards and uh, fighting for for many years because the men have been ski jumping for many years, but this is the first time that the ladies were allowed to do it. And um yeah, it was a really special weekend. It was like, we weren't competitors anymore. We were all there to support each other. Um, I have a video also showing, this one uh, went pretty pretty popular on social media. It it shows um, me jumping every hill from when I was uh, six years old on the 10 meter hill, all the way up to last year, jumping the 240 meter hill in in Vickerson, Norway. So I'll show you that video, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, you can maybe tell me in the chat, uh, tell us in the chat, which size hill you think you would go up to, which size hill you'd go off of. Where is it? So that is ski flying. It's kind of hard to tell in the video because I look so small and like a little dot, but we are going 
uh, 100 kilometers an hour down that ramp. And the large Olympic Hill, we usually go about 90 kilometers an hour. So that extra 10 Ks feels really fast when you're coming through the, the curve like that. And my farthest jump was 188 meters, which is two, I'm pretty sure that's two uh, soccer fields long, flying through the air on skis, uh, subject to whatever the elements in the wind want to do to me. Um, so that was a really, really cool experience. And I'm looking forward to that very much this March. Also, we'll get another chance to ski fly. Um, I want to share also now, come back to the whole mission of Take Me Outside and what sport has given me as an athlete, the skills that I have, um, the, oh, got to let my cat out. Okay. Um, Sorry about that. Trying to manage animals in here is always crazy. You'll see my dogs soon in, in my presentation also. Um, but what sport has given me is, is just this abundance of resources to be able to go outside and, and do things and feel like I'm confident enough to execute those skills. And I'm going to start uh, talking a bit about what I do uh, specifically for my sport training wise. Uh, on the left, that's a photo of me uh, juggling a, a volleyball, but I'm, I'm hitting it with my feet. We do that almost every time we warm up for a ski jump. We do like, we play games with, uh, our team. I can, I'll talk about one of the games that maybe you guys can try. It's, it's really fun. Um, and I have some, some, some more videos of training. So here is an example of, uh, what we, do one of the exercises we do is a plyometric workout so it's jumping over sticks oh, not now <laughs> and i do a, a really cringy dab at the end of that i don't think that's cool i was obviously doing not that now. as a joke <laughs> but we do those to train our muscles to be quick and to be able to jump off the ground um another form of training we do one second here i think i've got it minimized um not that one not that one oh yeah that one okay okay here is an example of uh of something that we would do in the gym we usually do two weight workouts a week and two uh plyometric workouts or speed workouts so we do this exercise with weights where we squat down and then accelerate up and our coaches catch the weights and there's lots of technical reasons why we specifically do this is because for ski jumping, we're trying to build really quick, really lean muscles. So you don't want to be catching the weight and having that fall down on you. You want to just accelerate up and keep your muscles quick. Um, another really cool video. This is an example of something that we do that's very, very specific. Let me find it. I was just, I was, I was better at this finding everything on here and see it there it is okay this is a uh very sport specific exercise where we go on a rolling board and we set our in run position and we do a jump into our coach's arms this one's always funny everyone always thinks we're doing dirty dancing in the gym when we do this <laughs> so that type of exercise that movement of us jumping into our coach's arms translates directly into oh what happened here oh <laughs> where did I go okay translates directly into what we would do on the hill when we're training so our coaches take a video of us in the gym doing that and then they take a very similar video from a very similar angle when we're going off the ski jump so like this no, that's my coach yelling because that was that was a good one. That was a good jump. Um, so it it's very easy to compare the movements and to um, see what you're doing in the gym and see what you're doing on the hill and be able to analyze that. Um, I think one more video for training here. This is actually a comp. This is what they show on TV. So this competition. This is my last jump of the summer in Klingenthal, Germany, and this is what they show on the TV in Europe. The commentary is in Slovenian. It was on Slovenian TV. And yeah, hopefully one day they can show this on Canadian TV too. Okay, Vasa, u tim politiju, brez stupnič, z najslabšim rezultatom, 12. mesto, 
Tako, njen, saj za zdaj, njeno najslabše izhodišče v poletnem delu. Abigail Strait iz Kanade, skupaj z Aleksandrijo Lutit, ki tudi še pride na vrsto prvi dve imeni kanadskih skokov. Ne le ženskih, ampak tu moramo vključiti sveda tudi moške skoke, pa čeprav je Mackenzie Boyd Klaus že dolga leta, recimo blizu tistim najboljšim, ampak ne tako uspešen kot sta Abigail Strait in pa Aleksandrija Lutit. Na desetem mestu je Abigail Strait. Ja, so that's the just of it. How much of that did you guys understand? How much Slovenian did you learn from that video? I've been telling you, I can tell you I've lived in Slovenia for three years now and I can say eggs. I can say please, thank you, hello, but not cannot hold much of a conversation after that. Luckily, everyone there speaks English um, anyways. But so that is some of the training that I do on a daily basis when I'm in Slovenia. When I'm home, I go to the gym. Obviously, I can't ski jump at home, but I'm in the gym doing those exercises. Um, but that is not all that I am as an athlete. And you don't have to be a professional and Olympic athlete to be able to get outside and get moving and do things that make you feel good and make you feel mentally well. So some other things that I do, some activities, um, I, first of all, I take my dogs everywhere I can. So this is, uh, I like in the summer, I like hiking. I like mountain biking. This is kind of a silly mountain biking photo, but it's the only one I could find. Um, and I also like hiking in Slovenia. I have, I used to live uh, above this Slovenian, this old Slovenian lady, and she would take me hiking every Sunday or, and I, I still text her. I'm like, Hey, you want on a hike? And then I go out with all her like old friends and um, we go hiking. So that's, that's a really fun activity to do. Uh, I also really like to fish with my dad. Um, we go fishing in Alberta. We've gone to Saskatchewan also. Um, oh, someone's printing something. It's my sister. And, um, yeah, I, I bring my dog also fishing conveniently. Uh, here's some photos actually from my, the past four days from being home. That's on the left. That's my two dogs, Henry and Freya. I took them hiking. And then that's Henry on the right. Also, I took him fishing yesterday. That photo is yesterday. I just slid it right into my presentation. So, um, it's perfect. Um, I also, in the winter, as Ryan mentioned, I am a skier. I learned skiing before I learned ski jumping. So that's like a very foundational skill I have. I like cross-country skiing, like also taking my dog cross-country skiing. That's my old lab. Um, I usually hook him up to a harness and he helps me a little bit on the uphills, gets a workout also. Um, surfing also is one of my favorite hobbies to do. I have surfed in... Tofino. I've surfed in Calgary on the river. I also surfed on the, the photo on the right. I've surfed in the winter out in Kananaskis, which is freezing, not for the faint at heart, but really cool experience made for a really cool photo. Um, and as Ryan mentioned, I am also a beekeeper. So although this isn't really a physical activity, it's still a way for me to get outside and get in touch with nature. And I think bees are super cool. They're part of my whole brand as an athlete. I have, I don't know if you saw in one of the videos, I have a bee on my ski that I always point to and I have a good jump because I don't know, it's, it, my name's Abby. I have bees. It's really, it's really just part of my brand as an athlete. So beekeeping is a really cool thing that I do as well. Um, that's kind of all I have prepared. I thought that this, um, for this group, a Q and A, a larger Q and A would be a great, thing to do just because ski jumping is so unknown in our uh, country and you probably have lots of questions about um what it is or or the, the you know anything any type of questions I also have one more video that I didn't show you earlier but it is a short vlog of our Olympic experience um so I'll show that to you also it's it's pretty fun it shows uh like us getting the medal and what it was like a little bit uh behind the scenes I have, um, if you want to check out my social medias, I also have YouTube. I post vlogs from our team camps and stuff that are a lot longer. I'm not going to show you like a 10 minute vlog right now, but they, they show a lot of behind the scenes, uh, stuff. So I'll show you that one last video. And then, um, maybe I'll bring Ryan and Stephanie in. We can ask, uh, if we're going to do some of the activities or I can show you, uh, I have a couple of coordination ac activities that we do pre-comp that are pretty cool. But I'll show you this one last video. Let me find it. Here. 
and you share theirs and enjoy the Olympic experience. <laughs> Let's go, Canada. Get it. He's got a good one this one. I can't do it. It's a big one yesterday. Canada won a historic bronze medal in mixed team ski jump. The team secured Canada a podium and giving them their first ever medal in Olympic competition at ski jump. Yo, you go with these two. Yo, I got one of these too. There we have it. The Olympic vlog. I have a longer version, I think, on my Instagram, but um yeah, that's 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 what it was like. I I I really like listening to the the announcer when we were jumping. The, the, the English announcers like, oh my god, like they've got the medal. Like never heard ski jumping announced like that before. So that was pretty fun. Um yeah, so maybe uh Stephanie or Ryan, should we do QAs or I have, like I said, some some maybe fun games or exercises that the kids can try that are kind of related to my sport. They can try them later. Um yeah. The... Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Abby, first, I got to say, like, this was just phenomenal. And, and, you know, for the classes that are tuning in, like, not only is this educational, learning about this sport, um, like us, even at Peachy Canada, learning about this sport uh, is huge. And, and so, you know, I think this is just fantastic today, Abby. Um, I do have so many questions, and we got so many questions in the chat box. But, you know, I would be really curious, I would love for students to kind of feel um, you know, if you could kind of take students through like what would be a, maybe a more technical prep that they could do in their classroom, like right now or at recess or something like just something kind of cool, like a warm up thing or something that kind of stands out to you that's specific to ski jumping so that those students could say, Hey, like I, I can do this. Like yeah. Abby, who's a, who's a world-class ski jumper. For sure. I'll let me get my little environment ready here. I can show you some hands-on stuff. So one of the exercises that we've recently started doing with our physio, um, so ski jumping is actually, believe it or not, uh, about a, an 80% mental and a 20% physical sport. Uh, it's less about being, I mean, you obviously, you have to be an athlete, you have to be healthy, you have to be fit, but uh, when it comes down to it, it's how good you can keep your brain sharp and exercise execute at the right time and one of the exercises we started doing with our, with our physio hey abby uh, so sorry to interrupt you but do you want to stop sharing your screen and oh, then we'll yeah. be able to see that you be... a little bit bigger yeah. okay stop share stop share there we go am i big now <laughs> okay so you can try it with a partner and what we do is you'll have two balls in your hand and you'll have your partner standing on the other side with their hands matched up but no balls and then the partner will drop a ball and you have to catch it as soon as they drop it. So it's a reflex exercise. You catch it. And if that's too easy for catching it, you can try doing it on one leg. You can try doing it on one leg and then crossing over your hands. So you're catching the left hand to the right hand ball. You can do two at a time. You can do a cross. And it's pretty interesting. Once you get tuned in to the exercise, your body almost does it automatically. And it's really fun to do that before a competition. It, it totally makes me feel confident when I show up and I'm, I go up to my, it's our physio that does the exercise with us. And I go up to her and I'm like, okay, let's do it. And at first maybe I'll drop a few and then I totally get tuned into it. And I'm like catching them, catching them. And it makes you feel pretty sharp in the mind. So um, that's a fun exercise. Another thing you guys can try. Our warmups are pretty, 
um, basic. We, we, I usually go for a run or do um, a kicking game. We have a game where all of us stand in a circle, our team, and you either kick or volley the ball. It can bounce once and then someone else has to kick or volley it. It can bounce. And then whoever messes up, basically you get a letter. So you're spelling a word, you're spelling like pig or uh, I don't know. And we usually do a four letter word. Um, and then once you're out, then it's sudden death between everybody else. So then you only have one life left. Um, maybe I can, I don't know if I could like film a video later and send it to Ryan and he could send it out to you guys. Um, another thing I think you guys should try very ski jumping specific is the in-run position. So the position that we do when we're going down the slope to gain our speed, it's actually the most important part of the entire ski jump is how you're set in your position because that determines how you're able to get out of the position. And if you're behind in the position, then you're gonna lose a lot of speed in the air. And if you're on your toes in your balance, then you're not gonna be able to push down fully. So try doing this, if you're standing like this, the first rule they teach us in ski jumping when I was about six years old is the width between your feet is two hands. That's the width of the track. So you put two hands between your feet like that. And then you're basically hinging at your hips as far down as you can and try to keep your back really, really flat and your hands nice like this. Maybe try to find a point of contact on your body and then you sink down and you're in your position. And the biggest focus is to where your balance is on your feet. You don't wanna feel like you're rolling on your, oh, also, I didn't mention, I'm also a runner and I got new shoes yesterday. So that's why I'm wearing shoes in my house. That's not a normal thing. And they look really fast. But <laughs> when you're doing that interim position, you don't want to feel like you're on your toes. You don't wanna feel like you're on your heels. You wanna feel like the balance is right in the middle of your foot. The whole time you're going down, feel really grounded in your position. So that's some kind of fun stuff you guys can try that's very specific to my sport. You wouldn't see anybody else in the gym setting that position. Um, and like I showed you guys the video, when we step it up one notch, we go on that board with wheels and we jump into our coach's arms. That's uh, maybe a, if you guys want to try it, you can, but uh, I don't feel like I should suggest that to kids because I'm going to get calls that there's like there's got to be some type of liability issue. Um yeah, maybe those could be some fun exercises to try out. Yeah, that's awesome, Abby. Really cool. And, you know, just simple kind of things that you can take and use and 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 do. And I love the focus side of that with some of those activities and then just the the biomechanical side of that. And, you know, it even got me thinking about like maybe we we bring you in to do like a ski jump tag type activity where instead of just a freeze tag, you have to like hold the ski jump position. Yeah while you're while you're tagged so we should definitely connect after this to do when, something about, yeah when I was yeah. um younger like on the the uh, junior team we used to have competitions for who could hold that position the longest because it's basically like holding a squat like your legs will start yeah. to burn pretty fast but that you guys could try that so you can hold the position the longest it's I have like trauma trauma memories from that exercise <laughs> So a couple of questions for you, Abby, and um, and we got a lot of great questions from from the group, and uh, I think we have some time to cover off some of them. So Stephanie, just let us know when we're when we're getting short on time. But um, <laughs> first of all, before we jump into some of those questions, um, I do just got to say, like, give Abby a follow on social media. Uh, you, your your video content is so great, and I think storifying your Olympic experience is huge. And you know, I think what you've done is just incredible. And you touched on some really uh, large topics here just around like the sport and you know how you're training overseas right now as a Canadian athlete and I think there's a lot there that we need to raise more awareness around the sport and how important it is and I think you know just again thank you for for you know providing that voice here today um, but definitely yeah you know folks give give Abby a follow and 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 you know be a part of that journey but I have a question for you and then I want to turn to um, some of the questions that we get we got from our schools, but I want to actually go back to um, your injury that, that that period of time, that 2017, 2021 time. Um, obviously, it was a very emotional time. You share that in your video, which is super powerful. But I want to talk a little bit about resilience. And so my question for you is, you know, how how was that mental side of coming back from that injury? Because 
you know, I think we all deal with setbacks, you know, at different points in our lives. And, you know, if you could kind of share a little bit about, um, you know, how, how did you overcome some of that, some of the, some of those challenges, mm-hmm. and maybe that, that might inspire some of the folks here today as well to um, kind of, you know, have that mindset to moving forward. So I'm just curious if you have anything there you want to share before we jump into questions from the, yeah, from sure. the class. So I didn't, I didn't mention the actual word resilience or resiliency. I should have, but that is one of the big missions of, of this uh, take me outside. And although I didn't mention the word, all of those setbacks that I had that did take a pretty high level of resiliency, obviously um, I had to keep focusing on my goals and keep knowing where I wanted to go. One of the biggest things that kept me, uh, mentally there and eager. I never once thought in my mind that I was going to quit. Uh, that's it's never, never crossed my mind. Um, first of all, I stayed connected to the sport. So I didn't just, Oh, I'm injured. Okay. I'm not talking to anybody for the year. Then I'm not a ski jumper right now. I actually went, I still went down to that annual trip to park city, Utah, and I was coaching our younger kids. I was, uh, 18 when I hurt my knee. So I was kind of at that level where there was some kids that looked up to me. So I went up and I, I helped them. I was still, I was watching the, our, um, my teammates jump. I was watching the national U S team jump and I was staying connected in that headspace. I was replaying the jumps in my head over and over and over again and remembering the feeling. Um, I also just, it was just like another mission. It was like all these other obstacles I would have. It was something that, okay, this happened. Um, now I've got to like build this little puzzle to how to get back to where I want to be. Um, luckily, if I can call my injury lucky, it happened in a good time frame in that I had plenty of time to recover before the next Olympics. So it wasn't like it happened right before. And I was like, okay, well, that dream's done. I still, I knew that I could come back and be fully healthy for that goal. So I think the advice I would give if you're ever encountering an obstacle, such as an injury or, you know, any other of the other uh, things that I mentioned is to always have your, your goal in sight, never forget that. Um, and then break that down and take 10 steps back and focus on what you can do that day, what you can do that week, what you can do that month, make these little plans for yourself, these little goals. And if you get to a goal or a milestone and you haven't accomplished it, that's okay. You can reroute it and just always have that final, final line of sight and you'll get there. Yeah, I love that, Abby. That's some wise words for for mm-hmm. folks here that are tuning in. Um, so I want to jump to some questions we got from from our schools here today. We got so many. Uh, I'm going to combine a question here. We got a question from Miss Kerr's grade three class, uh, Carter. If you're still here, uh, this was part of Carter's question, and then we had a grade three four split. Uh, Spencer at that school also had a very similar question. So I'm going to kind of combine the two. Um, my question, Abby, is uh, how hard was it to win your medal at the Olympics? Uh, and what did that feel like? If you could kind of capture that feeling for folks when you got that medal, I know you talk about the announcer, the voice being raised and all that, but how did that feel and how hard was it to win that medal? Mm -hmm. So obviously very hard. Um, it took 16 years of, of hard work. Um, but when it came down to it that day, it didn't feel so hard. We, um, since we were working as a team after the first round, we were actually in fourth place and we went into that competition actually with just the mindset of having fun. We weren't, we weren't expecting to be medal contenders. We weren't expecting to have that opportunity. And we were in fourth place after the first round and we were like freaking out. We were super excited. Um, We were like, this is regardless of what happens, this is going to be a Canadian record. I think the best position before that was eighth. So we were like, Holy, like this is happening. And, um, then we all kind of looked at each other and we're like, wait, wait a second. Like we're only halfway done. We all still have one more jump. And then immediately you could see all of our focus just went right back to what we had to do. And I remember, um, so I was the third jumper. So I saw the first uh, uh, girl go, Allie, and she did great. She kept us, I think she kept us in fourth place. And then I saw our first boy go, uh, Matthew. And I saw he had a, a really good jump. And I was like, okay, I'm next. I cannot look at what school, I cannot look at where we're sitting. I can't know if we're in, in third or fourth. Like I need to just not. So I just left the room and I went and did my jump and never been, I don't know how it clicked so easily, but I I was just totally in the zone. I did exactly what my coaches wanted me to do. And as soon as I landed, I was like, well, I'm like I did what I was supposed to do. I know that they did what they were supposed to do. And we were all just waiting for Mackenzie, our final 
um, men's jumper and he's a four-time Olympian. So he's got way more experience than that was all the rest of us. It was our first Olympics. And we were like confident that he had it in the bag. Um, but him, I, I can't imagine what his headspace was in because for the final round, they actually, uh, for the final round of jumpers, they reversed the order. So uh, all of us were the second team to go, meaning we didn't know what place we were in. But he was the third last to go, which means they go third place, second place, first place. So he knew that we were sitting in the the medal position and he was able to pull it off. So the whole team honestly performed really, really well. And the feelings in that moment, I like I it's really hard for me to put it into words. It was very overwhelming. I remember they showed us this like step by step uh how to get on the podium properly like how to walk over there and none of us could even read we were so out of our minds like it was like kids drawings like walk this way and I was like you know what I'm just gonna wing it and then when we went up to get on the podium we half of us stepped up and then jumped and half of us jumped up so we ended up doing the wave and then we tried to do it again and did the same thing and we're like okay and it was all on tv and we were like whatever we're here we're happy um so the feeling was like really really euphoric it was I I've like immediately journaled it wrote it down I tried to like remember it in my head as well as I could because yeah now I'm like okay I gotta go get another medal at the next Olympics because gotta relive that moment yeah it was really really cool yeah that's super cool um and if we have time for one more question I'm, I'm looking at Stephanie here but uh yeah, I think we may have to do it let's do one more quick one it's okay, just one more there's so many one. good ones <laughs> yeah I know so I'm going to combine a question so this first part of the question comes from Miss Benjamin's grade three class so if you're still tuning in uh this is from Miss Benjamin's class so this part of the question is where is your favorite place to ski jump and mm -hmm. then the second part of the question is what is your favorite part of ski jumping so kind of two related questions mm -hmm. there if you could give a quick uh, quick answer to that favorite place is really tough to decide um I've jumped in Whistler BC a few times and that is just like so magical because it's the only time we get to jump at home so there's something special special about that but I also really like the training hill we have in Kron Slovenia which is super convenient because we get to train on it all the time uh that's two hills already so I, I could go on but I'm gonna keep it there um my favorite part of jumping it's, it's gotta be the flying I mean there's nothing quite like it. So um, that, that'll, that that's my favorite. And, but also the feeling of landing a jump where you know that you did everything right. As soon as you land, you're like, oh, good. That felt good. It's uh, very rewarding. Yeah, that's really cool. And, and I'm sure you you share some of that in, your, in some of your content too. And hopefully in the future, continue to share that. Um, I think it's just so cool. Um, so again, Abby, I just want to say, you know, thank you for coming in here today. I know we have some prize giveaways coming up uh, as well. And, and just take me outside week overall is just such an incredible week to raise awareness around health and well-being and resilience, which you touched on here today. And your journey is so unique and so specific and just so cool. So, you know, thanks, you know, on behalf of Peach Canada, it's just been amazing uh, to have you here. So um, with that, Stephanie, maybe I'll turn it over to you if we want to do some prize giveaways and, and close this out here today. Yeah, definitely. Sounds good. And I'll just change us back to gallery mode here so you can see all of us. Amazing. Yeah, thank you so much, Abby. I think I know you can't see everyone watching, but I'm sure there's massive rounds of applause. <laughs> and that was so fun. And yeah, I can't even choose a favorite part, but uh yeah amazing I love seeing all the swag that you got and hearing just what it was like it's it's hard it's hard to imagine those feelings of being in on that podium and everything and awesome yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's just it's it's so special to be able to hear it firsthand and yeah it's so inspiring and uh yeah thank you so much and I yeah I, I'm sure that prize giving. I want to know who won. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Out of all the folks who uh, who uh, were writing their amazing questions in the chat, we're gonna have to share the question list with you after Abby because yeah, it's so I long. Gonna, I was gonna say also anybody, <laughs> like I said, message me on Instagram. Uh, I will I will respond to any questions you guys have, especially if you say that you were part of this group. I'll be super happy to do that amazing yeah there's there's just tons there's tons about ski jumping there's tons about the olympics and i mean of course everyone started questions asking questions about your pets once those yeah, yeah. showed up on the screen about my pets all day 
Awesome. Well, that, yeah, that's a great, great reason to stay connected. Then we'll make sure we add your, when we follow up with everyone here, we'll make sure we add your socials and stuff in there. So um, and yeah, we have one more session this afternoon with Elaj Balde. So that's going to be super fun as well. Uh, and the winners from today. So Mrs. Blake's grade three class. Thank you for your questions. You're one of our five winners today. If you want to reach out, you can either email us, uh, I'll put our email in the chat there, or you can send your email in the chat right now. So either one works, just get in touch with us so we can send you your prize. So Mrs. Blake's grade three class, congrats, you're our first winner. Our second winner out of five is Heather Gallant. Congratulations, Heather Gallant in your class. Third winner is Mademoiselle Hunt in Regina, Saskatchewan. Our fourth winner is Mrs. Kerr's grade three class. Congratulations. We really couldn't do this without all of your amazing questions. And our fifth and final winner is Sherry Hesjak. Congratulations. So we'll get you hooked up with memberships to PHE Canada, which is uh, a year-long membership if I'm if I'm understanding correct. Nice. Okay, I got the thumbs up for Ryan. Uh, there's the link to PHE Canada in the chat as well. Check them out because they do so much amazing stuff. And they did healthy, the healthy schools, the national healthy schools week earlier this month. And, uh, that's a really fantastic way to get involved and make, you know, get your whole school involved too. So I don't have any other, any other things to say beyond, uh, wishing everyone a happy take me outside week and Ryan, anything else from, from your end? No, no, just, uh, you know, take these activities, these ideas that Abby shared, yes. say this inspiration, like I am going to go outside in this parking lot behind me and try to practice that ski jump move, that squat position, Abby, I love it. So <laughs> holding it, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe it'll be like a few years ago, that plank challenge was going around, maybe it'll be like the yeah, ski yeah, jump yeah. challenge, you know, something like that. But <laughs> I think that no, this was sure. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Oh, fantastic. So We'll stay connected and we will see you all hopefully um, at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern for our next uh, presentation. And then, of course, head outside after that. So yep. thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. And thank you to everyone watching, listening. Wish I could see you, but I know you were there. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day.